Hey everyone, this is Chris from Convince and Convert. Today I'm going to walk you through our latest webinar, our latest series of webinars that last only nine minutes because you've got stuff to do. Uh, this one we're going to be talking about comparing email signup processes and we're going to be walking through sample email signup forms that different organizations use. Now to compare apples to apples, we've, we're just going to look at some sites from a specific industry, the travel and tourism industry. We're going to be taking a look at Visit Milwaukee, the Monta Montana Office of Tourism, and Travel Oregon. Okay, so the first one that we're going to take a look at is Visit Milwaukee. Let's take a look at those guys. So here we are on the Visit Milwaukee website, and I believe if you scroll down on the right-hand side here, you can see their e-newsletter sign-up. Let's click that, and that's going to take us to this form here, wrapped within a number of other content elements here and you can see right away they're saying receive email updates regarding Milwaukee events and travel specials. Um, I don't see any sample emails or I don't have a, a way to link to a sample email so I can see what I'm going to be getting which might be something that could be uh, valuable to the visitor uh, but the good thing is that it's a pretty easy form there's not a lot of uh, fields here it's pretty simple so I'm just gonna fill this out really quickly See what happens next and they do have a little captcha area so they make sure that they validate uh, information that comes through make sure they get quality leads which is a good practice and then that's about it it's, it's a pretty simple form let's submit the form and we get a simple thanks you will receive our next email newsletter soon uh, they don't set a lot of expectations there I, we, we know that we're going to get the email newsletter but when does it uh, arrive weekly or, or monthly um, so that's something they might want to improve upon so in looking at how visit milwaukee did let's take a look really quickly so they've got limited information about the newsletter content there wasn't a sample newsletter um, they do have a pretty easy to complete form. It's only three fields long. They do have a thank you message, which is great, but they didn't send a confirmation email. At least I haven't received one. So if you, we were to grade how Visit Milwaukee is doing, it's probably like a C. Nothing, nothing terrible, but nothing too great. Uh, it's very simple um, and uh, didn't really provide a lot of samples and, and not a lot of benefits to actually getting the newsletter, which we would obviously recommend. The next one we're going to look at is the Montana, Montana Office of Tourism. So let's go there. Here's Montana's site, and automatically we see a lot of really nice imagery that's compelling and encourages people to potentially visit Milwaukee, or I'm sorry, Montana. And if we scroll down here, we see a, a, some links for a, a guidebook. There's some social media. Uh, links obviously and then down here we've got our e-newsletter and so let's see what we've got here now obviously this is a lot different than the visit Milwaukee form and that there's just a lot more fields here uh, they should be commended for actually trying to gather interests from their different uh, from the people who, who want to sign up for information and meanwhile they're only really requiring it looks like denotes a required field they're only really requiring email name and have you visited before and, and potentially some interests here the the downside of this is is while they are attempting to gather a lot of information from the visitor it might be too much and and i would be willing to guess that they don't have let's say there's 25 different um check boxes here I'm willing to guess they don't have 25 different versions of their newsletter that they send out on a regular basis. So I think that it's great that they're trying to segment, but they might be able to do it in a little bit more uh, streamlined manner. Maybe it's categorical. So are you interested in national parks? Are you interested in arts and culture, ranches, leisure activities, and so on? Um, some of the other information they have here, during what seasons do you typically travel? So that might be helpful if they're going to be sending seasonal specials and, and, and offers and things like that. So let's let's fill this one out too real quick. Have I visited Montana before? Yes I have. And let's say we're gonna just fill out a few random ones here just to see what we get.
and now we get our thank you page. Please check your email to confirm your subscription. So they are using it looks like a double opt-in process, which basically when I open my email next, I'm going to be getting uh, a note from them that basically says click here to confirm your subscription, which is which is the best practice, and that's something that is good for Montana to do uh, so that they can verify the quality of the leads that they're or the contacts that they're entering into their their newsletter system. Okay. So when we take a look back at what Montana did, again, they made a good attempt to capture all those interests, just there's just way too many. And it, it's kind of arduous form to fill out. Um, is all that information really utilized? I doubt it. I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt and say it probably is, or at least they try to. And that might be better as a two-step process. So what you want to do with, with email forms, especially since not many people love to fill those out, is focus on getting just a modicum of information, just take what you need to survive, and then go back later in the process and ask for some of those interests, okay? They do have a double opt-in process, which is preferred. It's an extra step for the visitor, but it does provide the quality of information that you're gonna be collecting. And again, like Milwaukee, Montana did not provide a sample newsletter, which would be recommended. So we're gonna give these guys a B, B minus. So pretty good, but there's definitely some room for improvement. The final one we're going to be looking at is Travel Oregon. So let's go there quickly. Here's the Travel Oregon site. And much like Milwaukee on, and Montana, um, they do have the sign up process all the way down at the bottom. Now, it's not very evident. I mean, you see some social media chiclets here. There's the subscribe link. I'm going to not go there for a second because I think what they're doing is interesting and that they're not making a very prominent call to action. It's way down in the footer. One of the things they do throughout the website and, and even on the home page is you see this add to trip planner. Okay. And you see it throughout the website. Um, but here, let's say I want I'm interested in this fishing trip. So I want to add to trip planner. And immediately you get this sign up form in which you can create an account and actually create a trip to Oregon that includes all the different things you find on the website, um, no matter if they're adventure, food, historical, cultural, whatever they are. Now, if I was to sign in and had an account, I could, I could easily sign in, but I'm going to create an account. And it's nice that they've got the connect with Facebook there as well. But I'm going to create an account really quickly. Grab my email here. Create a quick password. Got my display name. They also have a CAPTCHA, which is not a bad practice. It's a little annoying for the visitor, but it's worth it to make sure that you get um, quality information and, and no robot submissions. Create the account. Now I have my account. OK, what's next? Now they provide a call to action to create that trip planner. Um, we can connect on Facebook. And then they've got a secondary call to action to subscribe to the newsletter. Let's check that out quickly. So here you can see that they've got four different newsletter subscriptions. They don't have 25 options like Travel Montana did, but they've got a general newsletter, a culinary, outdoors, Travel Oregon digital magazine. And you can see underneath they've got really, you know, cursory descriptions of each and they tell you when you're going to be receiving these these newsletters which is really helpful and if I want to describe to one or many I can do that and easily verify my information now there are, there are a number of fields here but you'll notice the only one that's not optional is email one thing that I would have done if I was travel organ is to actually feed that in because I just created an account and then um, we can go from there now they do have some offers for third-party uh, advertisers or partners. I'm not going to check those, but at least I have the option to not uh, receive information from third parties. And I'll submit this and get a thank you message. Okay. Eventually. Well, that's Nick, and I'm going to go back to the notes on Travel Oregon. Um, one thing that they do really well is they focus primarily on the content. You didn't see a bright button that said, hey, sign up for our newsletter. And I think based on this, I'm, I'm making the assumption that Oregon 
is doing something very smart in that they're focusing on the content first. Um, they realize that this game is not necessarily about collecting the most email addresses possible. It's about utilizing email to strengthen and deepen relationships with people who already know your name. And I'll say that again. They realize that this, this is not about collecting as much email addresses as possible. They realize it's about utilizing email to strengthen the relationships with people who already know your name. And, and that's the key there. Um, so. They do use newsletter sign up as a secondary call to action. They've got that connect with Facebook, which I thought was, was good. Um, they offered four distinct newsletter options. They provided descriptions and timing and a screenshot. That screenshot was not clickable. It would have been nice to expand that and really see it in detail so I know what I'm getting. Um, so for Travel Oregon, we're going to give them a grade of A-. Uh, why not A? Well, they did have a few improvements. Again, they could have carried that, that email address over. The submission form took a little time. And one thing that none of these folks did, not Milwaukee, Montana, or Oregon, none of them had their forms or their newsletter sign-up processes on their Facebook page, which seemed like a really easy thing to do, especially for Milwaukee, where you've only got three fields. And so here's what one of those would look like. Here's the one for one social thing, which is obviously convince and converts a daily newsletter. You can see a sample and, and two quick fields and all that kind of thing. So they should be able to carry over, here's a thank you page for Oregon. They should be able to carry over those forms or at least a, a shorter process onto Facebook to capture emails from that from that area as well. Well, I think I'm over nine minutes, so I better let you go, but uh, thanks very much. And please comment below if you have any questions or would like to add anything else to this webinar.